On the 16th of July 2018, Alice Majodi and Privilege Kuora vanished from the face of the earth. They were last seen entering a red vehicle after getting piss jobs from a white man. These two would wake up early in the morning and go and stand on a sidewalk on Union Street in Ranfontein waiting for employers to come and pick them up for piss jobs. On this particular day, they arrived early before 7 a.m. with their friend Munashe Muchenje hoping to catch the First employers. At around 8.15, a red Nissan Almera approached them and the white man that was on the driver's seat told them that he wanted two workers, one for the cleaning and one for the laundry. Munasha wanted the job too, but unfortunately the two women were the first to arrive at the car, so they're the ones that left with the white man. They were taken to a house in Hillside, Ranfontein, and Privilege was asked to clean the car while Alice was asked to clean the house. When Privilege was done, she wanted to see her friend Alice but the white man refused and sent her to go and buy milk from a tuck shop that was a bit far off. On her way to the tuck shop, Privilege decided to send a voice message to her sister Nyarai telling her that she had gotten a job from a white man with her friend Alice but she was not really allowed to speak to Alice. She was worried because of the strange behavior that was being portrayed by the white man but she was happy that she had gotten a job. Nyarai did not think much of it because she knew that with the type of job that Privilege did, she would meet a lot of strange and odd people. Privilege also claimed that this man was wearing only boxers with a gown, and this was making her feel uneasy. At around 12 p.m., Nyarai received a call from her sister Privilege, and she only managed to say Nyarai Nyarai in fear, and the call went dead. Nyarai became extremely worried and decided to call Alice's number, but it was also not getting through. The next morning, Munashe waited for her two friends on the sidewalk, but none of them showed up. She decided to call them on their phone numbers, but none of the numbers went through. She tried to even call the people that lived with the two women, and none of them had seen them. Munashe decided to go to the police and report the two women missing. Nyarai was also busy trying to contact anyone that knew these two women, but none of them had heard from them or had seen them in the last 24 hours. Nyarai also decided to go and report her sister and her friend missing at the police station. The police only look for people after 24 hours hours or 48 hours of being missing, especially if they are above 18 years of age. So they only sent an officer 48 hours later. On the 19th of July, the police then sent an officer at Union Street to ask all the women that would stand there looking for employment if they had heard or seen the two women. The only detail they got from that investigation was that the women were last seen entering a red vehicle and this was not enough. He needed more information. Luckily, he discovered that a shop near nearby had a CCTV and he wanted the footage. He entered the shop and asked the owner for the footage and the owner unveiled it to the police officer. When they looked at the footage, they indeed saw a red Nissan Almera passing through around the same time that Munashe had indicated to the police. The police officer showed the women on the sidewalk the footage that she had gotten from the shop and one of the women managed to identify the driver of the red car. This information allowed them to trace the vehicle to a plot on Robson Street in Rhinefontein. Four days after their disappearance, the police managed to arrive at the plot in Robson Street. On arrival, they managed to see a man named Blessing Bande, a caretaker of the plot. This man was a Zimbabwean and had worked at the farm for 11 full years. When the police officer showed him the photos of the two missing women, he recognized one of the women, Privilege. He had seen her washing the red car outside and he had greeted her and that's the only manner of communication that he had managed to do with her. When the police asked him who was living on the plot, he then told the police that the tenants of the plot were Bennett Abraham Noyent, a 52-year-old, and Suzanne Noyent, a 37-year-old. The police then directed Blessing to open the house so that they could search for the two women because they were last seen on this plot. Blessing then contacted his landlady, since the two tenants were not around and the landlady allowed them to enter the house and search. When the police searched the property, they could not find any clues, but there was something strange. One bedroom in the house was locked. The police had no rights to break down the door, so they had to contact the landlord again so that she could bring the key so that they would be able to search the locked bedroom. Before they managed to break down the door, Susanna, the tenant's wife, arrived from work. 
She claimed that she did not have the keys to the locked bedroom and that her husband had asked her not to open the bedroom because he was preparing a surprise for her for their wedding anniversary. Since the wife of the tenant was now around, the police officer then kicked down the door and a horrific smell filled the entire house. They had just discovered two dead bodies belonging to Alice and Privilege. The first suspect was obviously Bennett Noyeth, but he was nowhere to be found. When the police questioned his wife about his whereabouts, she claimed that she did not know where he was, but she assumed that he had gone to East London. Alice and Privilege's relatives were alerted and they were devastated. They wanted to know why. What was the motive for the unaliving of these two innocent, hardworking women? The police tried to track Bennett for the next two years, but to no avail. They could not locate him, so this stalled the investigation. They only managed to get a break when they traced Susanna's calls and they realized that she was in contact with Bennett. They traced him to a house in Dwarscloth in Ranfontaine on the 6th of January in 2020 and arrested him. The state then charged him with two murders and charged his wife with defeating the ends of justice for protecting her husband. When he was dragged to the courts, he claimed that he had not killed them and that he had found them already murdered and he only locked the door because he was afraid that he would be sent to prison. The court, however, found adequate and sufficient evidence to convict him using cell phone records, using witness testimonies, and using forensic evidence. He was found guilty guilty of both murders and was sentenced to 30 years in prison. His wife Susanna was found guilty of defeating the ends of justice and was sentenced to five years in prison. It seems as if he had tried to force himself on Alice and she had refused and overpowered him. So to cover up his crime, he decided to suffocate her and kill her. After killing her, he now had no option but to kill Privilege because she would have been a witness against him. These two Zimbabwean hardworking women lost their lives in such a brutal way all because they were looking for greener pastures. And this story is a stark reminder of how the Zimbabwean economic collapse has endangered many lives in the diaspora. May their souls continue to rest in eternal peace.